Today we're going to talk about um, basically how to upgrade your facility so that um, when visitors are here that you really broadcast your business as mountain bike or just bike friendly in general and what does that look like what are the simple things you can do and it, it doesn't take a ton and our two um, speakers here are really going to touch on that so we have Phil Black from The Lookout, who's really dialed into the mountain bike community. He's going to talk about what that means for your business. And we have um, Rich McCoy here from um, Clinton Pico, who's going to help us build a um, bike rack and really also talk about that portion of, of what your facility can have. So we're really glad you guys are here, and we'll let you go ahead and get started. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Phil, you want to go first? Or you want to go? Um, I, I, I don't know how in tuned I am with the mountain bike community, but I'm an avid cyclist. I've been riding mountain bikes for a long time. Um, but I do have a, a story to, to share. It's when I was chamber president about 10 years ago, I went to the Vermont Travel Conference at Stowe, and I was with Howard, Chris, and a couple other professional social legends. And I went out way too late and drank way too much. And the next morning, um, I get up at 5.30 to 6. Whenever it gets light out, I get up. I've never been a sleeper. So I get up with a pounding headache and, and my tongue was frozen in the roof of my mouth. I get up, I drink some water, and I go downstairs. I have breakfast. They have an 8 o'clock seminar. And it was uh, a guy named uh, James Chen, C-H-E-N. He was an economist from Harvard that the state of Vermont hired to do uh, economic development um, statistics and kind of see who's coming here, what are they doing, and what are they looking for. And there weren't five people in the room. Everybody went out for dinner, everybody stayed out late, and I sat there for an hour, and this guy, just everything he said, I just sat there with my mouth open saying, oh my God. But uh, the short version is, he said, if you are surviving, if you're a resort community in Vermont, and you're surviving on skiing, golf, and tennis, you're done. He said, if you don't know it, you're done. If you're not done now, you're done in five years. He said, right now, the, the only things that people are interested in doing in the summer, those things will always continue to have people uh, partaking in the activities, but they're not drivers. Right now, the drivers were multi-use trail systems, um, bike-friendly this, bike-friendly that, and attracting women, because his, one of his premises was women are making more money than men in the workplace in terms of a family income. They're smarter, they work harder, they smell better, all of the things we know anyway, but here it is, a guy with a, a great education telling you that. So his um, takeaways from this were, if you're going back to your resort community, you need to be pushing for trail systems, you need to be pushing for outdoor recreational um, opportunities that the whole family can do. If dad going to play golf for five hours does nothing for the, for the mom trying to book uh, a, a trip for a, for a family. And he was right. He was right in everything that he said and everything that he said could have happened has happened. And I look and I talk about all the travels that I've had and the places I've gone um, with my bike. And there is a culture in those places that we have lacked. And it's not that Vermont hasn't had it. I tell you, ride. Um, Fruta, Colorado, Moab, Stowe, Kingdom Trails, all of those places have created a culture based on a trail experience, not just bikes, um, but a trail experience that we have been very, very slow to try to create here. And still now, we're getting, our, our, we're getting traction and we're building a product. Um, but specifically right now, we have a downhill product that nobody else has but we're lacking cross-country trails. So in terms of us building, I don't say cross-country now, they say trail riding, right, Ben? Where am I? Yeah, yeah trail. So trail riding. And um, nobody's out there racing, but the ability to pedal, pedal multi-use trails and no gravity assist, right? Go out for the exercise and the love of biking. So that's, um, that's something that I've had and been advocating for in town for over 10 years. And um, there are enough people now where people are tired of hearing me say it, thankfully, and uh, other people are saying it, so it's, um, it's starting to happen and it's, it can't happen fast enough. I mean, it's been uh, an incredible driver for um, summer business up here, no doubt about it. What do you have to offer? Great. Well, I don't have any similar stories other than I've been on a lot of those trips and I shared your experience about night and day going out with this guy here. But 
uh, <laughs> mountain biking here is, you know, we've been doing it 27 years now at the resort, but we've, for the past 20 years, we really haven't been doing a good job just kind of maintaining what we had, keeping it going. Uh, it was off the top of the mountain, off the K1 gondola, rocky, rooty, very technical. You couldn't get beginners and intermediates into the sport very much. And the top 10% are the type of riders that were after that kind of terrain. So about eight, nine years ago, they asked me to take over summer operations. And, and I said, yeah, I'd be glad to, and wanted to find out what are we doing with it? Are we growing it? Am I closing it, babysitting it, or are we you know, gonna build it? And he said, no, we wanna build it. And so with the support of you know, uh, Killington Operations and Powder, once they came in, and the community, we've built up summer uh, hugely over the last five years, but we started really eight years ago. And now mountain biking's grown to tremendous leaps and bounds for us. You've seen the expansion. We hired Gravity Logic and brought them in to build some of the trails down on Snowshed. Then we opened up Ram's Head. And those are the kind of trails that anybody can ride. You know, it's flow trails, machine built, wide, nice berm turns. You know, and when we first built those trails, we thought, okay, this is what's going to get the beginners and intermediates into the market, which it did. But we thought all the experts would go ride up top at K1 and like that Rocky Rudy technical terrain, single track. But what happened is all those hardcore experts ended up staying down here because they could ride faster, they could hit the jumps harder, they could, you know, fly off the features. So we built Ram's Head more for those guys and built trails like uh, Black Magic, moved Blue Magic over there and Steel Panther. Some more very technical jump trails and it's kind of worked. The good news is it's brought a lot of new people into the market, which is great. It's a very addictive sport. If you haven't been out doing it, you should definitely get out and try it. Uh, we just had, what, eight, nine members of our HR team that have never mountain biked before went out yesterday, and they all said they loved it. They had a great time. They had no idea. There's a big misconception of what mountain biking is, and it's it kind of when skiing first started too, everybody thought you're jumping off these big rocks and moguls, and same kind of misconception with mountain biking. They think guys are just launching off of rocks and features, which that is a small part of it. The larger part is people coming down these trails and riding with their families. We started Bike Bums three years ago. The first Bike Bum race went last Wednesday had 110 people. And probably 20 or 30 of those were kids, right? So it shows the growth and the importance of getting younger kids involved, moms involved. One of the things we did when we started building up summer is we thought about what are we gonna have for the kids and for the moms? While, like Phil said, dad's out playing golf for five hours, right? Typical self-centered man. Hey, I'm gonna go out and go golfing and leave you know, my wife with the kids. Sorry, I wasn't supposed to say that, was I? <laughs> but, you know, those are the things that have changed. Now you have to build things for the family because the mom's making a lot of the decisions. Like, yeah, if you wanna go golf, fine. I'm gonna stay and do this with the kids. But now it's more of a family unit. Like, Maybe dad will go out and golf nine holes and come out and mountain bike with him and do some of the adventure center activities. So we really tried to make it family focused, which you know a lot of the community members here and the businesses have seen the growth over the last three to four years, where you know now we're getting more restaurants open in the summer. We're having more lodges open up. We're getting more people here. With the help of the KPA and the town and the community, we've got week events going on almost every weekend in the summer. You know, the Cooler in the Mountains concert series has been more successful. Spartan Race, we had Dirty Girl, now we've changed. But we've got a lot of events going on all the time. We, this year, we have a major mountain bike race coming. Um, that'll be here August 1st to the 5th. And uh, it's going to be great. So what we're going to do today is help you get your business bike ready. And, you know, we went to Winter Park. And they showed us this bike rack that they had in their um, bike shop. We looked at it and said, God, we'd love to build those. They look so simple because we used to have this old pedal hold system at K1 that just was horrible, horrible to use. Literally, I think it costs about $30 for the lumber on this. 
You can call Goodrow and they'll pre-cut the lumber, which we brought with us. I just ordered five more uh, yesterday and we left one completely unassembled and we're gonna show you how to assemble it today. Literally will take us probably 20 minutes to build it. And we'll let Sarah pick names and whoever uh, wins will actually deliver the bike rack right to your business today. But it's a very simple build out and we probably have 30 of these now, Ben. I was just saying, Colt has probably built 50 of these over the last two years. <laughs> I mean, we have them in our bike shop. We have them at all the lifts. We have them at, around the gondola. We have them at the umbrella bars. We use them out in the courtyard. Uh, they look neat. They're very easy to build, very easy to store. It's all wood. We just paint it. And uh, when we started working with the... Killington Ski Club to do a bike swap. We literally built 15 of them for them, for the bike swap. And the deal was they let us use them during the summer and we store them for them during the winter. So it's a great way, because if, you if you've mountain bike, you know mountain bikes don't have kickstands. So when these guys come to your property, they need some place to put their bike. If you have a locking storage, that's great. If not, just right outside your front door, you put one of these racks in, it holds eight bikes and like I said, you can pick it up and move it anywhere you want. And we're going to show you how to build one in just a few minutes. Okay, so we're going to go through very quickly. Coulter Peterson here, Ben Colon, and myself, Rich McCoy. We're going to show you how to build this bike rack. Very simple, easy to do. Consists of three 2x4x10s, which you lay out. Like we've done three 2x4x26.5-inch, which is basically your tire sizes. And then a bunch of two by sixes for the uprights. So we have the diagram right here. We're going to walk you through it. It's pretty easy to do. We call good row ahead of time. They pre-cut the lumber for us and you can pick it up or deliver it depending on how many you order. We basically build like 10 racks at a time when we start this process. And then we just put some stain on it or paint it. And it's, uh, God, we've had them in place now for probably four years and they still work great. The beauty is it's easy to move, it's lightweight, it's inexpensive, and it'll hold eight bikes for you. So we're gonna get started on it. It's pretty easy once you lay it out. You wanna go over, Coulter, because you're- Resistant stain that won't last for a while. So uh, yeah, so first I like to go down, make the measurements, um, try to space them out even. Um, generally the bike tires we use, they're, uh, yeah, about two and three quarters inches of space that fits the tire nicely. Um, if you think you're gonna get more road bikes, so maybe go a little thinner. If you think more fat bikes, maybe a little wider. Um, make one of each. Or one of each. Yeah. Hit it. Mark that. Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Yeah. So your first mark's gonna be at four and a quarter. Next we got 16 and a quarter. 16 and a quarter. Do it um, in the middle so you can draw it on both. Yeah, the 16 and a quarter, so here, here, you do it. Yeah, draw it. So make sure. Here, so you can get on both. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah, yeah. All right, so then another. One quarter of that, so 20 and a half. Well, you know that. these by heart. 32 <laughs> and a half. So it's every 12 inches, right? Yeah, 12 and four and a quarter. This on. 32 and a half, then you want to go four and a quarter. Yep. So four would be 36. So you'll alternate between four and a quarter and one foot. So the four and a quarter is the you know space for the actual bike tire, and the one foot would be the space between the bikes. 12 and a quarter from here is going to be 38, 48 and a quarter. And four and a quarter is going to put us at 52 and three quarters. Yeah. Should have, Should have had these mapped out for you. <laughs> then I'd like to come down from the other side after that. Just to, so I work from the outside in as opposed to all the way down one side. There you go. I can do that. All right, so those up, four and a quarter, 16 and a quarter, 
20 and a half. There are 32 and one half. 36 and three quarters. You dream about these numbers. <laughs> right. Uh, 48 three quarters. And 53. Should be right there. That looks right, right? Great. Yep. So that's pretty much all the measuring we have to do. And from there, I'll uh, roll these down. Have to pull our piece all the way out to the end here. Get nice and squared up. Then you want to grab me a drill on some screws. So you're gonna start this, the end pieces right at the very end of the two by fours. Thanks. Yeah, so I like to do two on either side just for you know more screws will be stable. We use two and a half inch self-tapping screws. And they hold together great. I'd recommend using screws instead of nails. Got that top one lined up there. Square. Mine's on. All right. You only you start yours, and then I'm gonna pry this out a little bit to get it. You do want to skip the first one there, Rich, because uh, you're going to have the legs coming out on these when they're sticking up. Yep. So we want to attach those after. Okay. So skip that first one, go all the way down to the next measurement. Make sure you got the piece of wood on the inside of those lines. Yep. Great. Yeah, just work our way down to the middle here. You got to help out, Ben. <laughs> And more expensive. More expensive and I think we should just do one for now, just for speed, or do you want to do all the merch? Can, one person can easily pick it up, move it In terms of like, you're thinking of walking. You definitely can do that, and if you maybe would have to have it stake down somehow, just for. Put the next two on there. What's the measurement in between? Should be two and three quarters, right? Yeah. So you want to just test the measurements here. In between these two by sixes, it should be two and three quarters to accommodate your bike tire size. And, you know, we're finding more and more that these bike tire sizes are going to go up. So, you know, if you have people that come to your location and they have fat tires, you might want to put a couple of them on the end further apart so they could accommodate fat tires. Or as Coulter mentioned, just build another rack with smaller diameters here for road bikes and larger ones for fat tire bikes. You can see they go together pretty quick. You just have to line these two pieces up to make sure it's close to square. We're not building a house, so if you're off a little bit, it yeah. doesn't matter. Precision is not the most important.
trained well on these over the yeah. course of the summer yeah. here. <laughs> You just built four of them yesterday, didn't you? I did, yes. So how long did it take you to build four? A uh, couple hours, maybe? Yeah, thereabouts. You know, I was running between upstairs and downstairs the other day. Right. But, uh, yeah. Just yeah, I was just going to work on Last one that we're gonna to want to put the, uh, the leg coming out on okay. as well. Skip that one for now. Yeah, that one after. All right. So that's the whole back side there. So you notice we did skip uh, one at either end and one right in the middle because we're gonna have these feet sticking out the front. So. Um, I find the easiest way is you just want to grab one of those. Yep. Um, is to put it straight up so you can actually get a spatial idea of it. Um, if you have it face down, I find a lot of the times I end up putting these on the wrong side. So <laughs> slide it up there on that side. Roll it down. So because you'll want it on the inside. But so. This will be here. Yep. That'll be there. So then you don't want to attach like that. So roll it down. Two screws right there. Yep. or something that's an outdoor screw. You don't want to use just drywall screws because they will rust over time. But you get the deck screws or these self-tapping coated ones. They won't rust. They'll last much longer. All right, so you got all the feet on there. So now we're just going to screw them in from the back. Get them attached here. You should still have our spacing lines on there. Put a screw in the two by four on the bottom, Coulter? I do, I do that last though. Just, just so it's easier to get at. So, so wait and do that last? Yeah, that's right. Flip it over at the end. Okay. So you're pretty quick to build. Ben, do we have a bike to demonstrate how it works? Or? Alright. Wanna grab that last two by four there? I go up to uh just put the uh and the lift these like ash cap around we want. And I'll see them upside down because it does it won't work. And last piece here, you just wanna you know line it up square in the front. Try to center it nicely. It's pretty good, right? Two more screws coming down through these. Alright, 
So I think we're screwed those. to the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so this will stay here now. <laughs> so flip it over this way. It'll be permanent. <laughs> then for good measure, we just want to get two more screws right in the end of these two by fours, just to hold it all together nicely. That's it. You got one bike rack. Flip it back up. And then just, if you want, you can sand it off a little bit, paint it, it's ready to go. There you go. And bikes just, the easiest thing is to put them in by the back tire. Back tire sits right on here. And then the front steering wheel, you can turn to either side and you fit eight of them straight across. Yeah. You can park them front tire first, it's just they have a tendency to fall over that way, yeah. whereas rear tire will stand up a lot More better. stable, it's sturdy. Yeah. It's, like I said, very easy to build. All the materials you need are right on the sheet here. <laughs> yeah, Anna, thanks, thanks you guys for coming. <laughs> yeah, and thanks to everyone in the audience who came and asked great questions. And this wraps up our mountain bike series, so we're just going to give everyone a round of applause for coming.